Hello everyone. I call myself uh, Mr. Yuva Spatel, working as assistant professor at Sharath Institute of Technology, College of Engineering, Edra, Ichalkaji, which is at Kolhapur district, Maharashtra. Today we are going through a meshing in FEA or FEM. So let's get started with what is a meshing or what is a mesh. As per definition, a mesh is a network that is formed of cells and points. It can be have almost any shape in any size and is used to solve the partial differential equation. Each cell of the mesh represents an individual solution of the equation which when combined for the whole network and results in the solution for the entire mesh. If you see again the importance of the proper meshing in a finite element analysis is predictive computational models of real world scenario are commonly used during the product development process and the engineering and scientists use finite element analysis and also known as FEA to build these models. The use typically begins with computer added design. The model that represents the physical part being simulated as well as knowledge of the material. This information this information enables the prediction of real world behavior often with a very high level of accuracy the proper meshing plays a critical role during this process if you see the first that is definition of meshing as uh, to help understand the importance of proper meshing in a finite element analysis and if you see, start with the basic definition of what meshing is. The straightforward definition fairly offers as the mesh generation is the practice of generating a mesh that approximates a geometric domain. Our common uses are for rendering to a computer screen such as finite element analysis or computational fluid dynamics. Meshing is a common term to demote the pre-processing phase of the finite element analysis and it is a tool that engineers use to complete their analysis of a particular design of product. If you see the meshing in a finite element analysis as we well know that a fact by most engineer service firms, the structures can be take up a tremendous part of an engineer's time in the meshing phase. That complex fabrication may use very little of the available CAD geometry when meshing or be just a 2D drawing image. For most structures, a good understanding of meshing is important for productivity and for productivity of that firm. The factors regarding this can include effective techniques in a meshing tool and this is very very important that the effectiveness in the technique in a meshing tool. How analysis objectives affects the mesh correct element type and the level of accuracy needed on the basis of effective technique we required. These points should be very clear. The analysis is key to product design. It helps with understanding issues like stresses, heat transfers, fluid flows and so on. The analysis can help estimate the performance of a product before it even exists, isn't it? 
So in engineering practice, analysis is uh, largely performed with the use of finite element computer programs and typically interfaced with the computer added design even. The proper meshing is a core part of this analysis and meshing can be 2.5D or 3D depending on the what is needed. If you see meshing in FEA, why do we need carry out a meshing? That is a very important question. Why we need to do meshing and why, what is what is that? How to? And why do we carry out this meshing in analysis of any kind of design or part? The basic idea of FEA is to make calculation at only limited number of points and then interpolate the results for the entire domain that is a surface or volume of that particular part or design any continuous object has infinite degree of freedom and it's just not possible to solve the problem in the first format and this format a1 the finite element method reduces the degree of freedom for infinite to finite with the help of discretization or meshing that is nodes and the elements one of the purpose of meshing is to actually make the problems soluble using finite element that is by meshing you break up the domain into pieces each pieces representing an element so this is what we are doing a meshing and one another aspect of meshing is the accuracy of your solution it can be shown that your goal global solution accuracy is a function of the element width and the smallest angle at the same or some elements vertices if you see type of mesh in a solid works if you see that a solid mesh in a 3d element this is what a 3d element the programs creates a solid mesh with a terahedral 3d solid elements for all solid components and tetrahedral elements are suitable for bulky objects this is what figure show for this solid mesh and the shell mesh we can say shell mesh that is 2d element 2d element the program automatically creates a shell mesh for sheet metals sheet metals with the uniform thickness except drop test study and uh, surface geometry for sheet metals the mesh is automatically created and at sorry at the mesh automatically created at the mid surface that is that we have shown this in figure and one is last 1d element that is line the program automatically uses a beam uh, mesh and the identifies a point for a touching or interfering structural member and non-touching structural member within a certain distance or if, if you say uh, some tolerances a beam element is a line element defined by two endpoints this one and this one and a cross section it has some cross section beam elements are capable of resisting axial bending shear and torsional loads and this is what a figure shows with a beam mesh of fundy element the overall procedure of the meshing is very important uh, we can see that first we have to decide the on the area of interest in the model that is component in which you want to determine the stress and displacement under the given conditions next removing all the components which are not <coughs> participating in the simulation because may they will bear no load or may they can be replaced in a model by their effects on the area of the interest that is replaced by a load or boundary conditions or even connectors 
or maybe uh, they are purchased components and therefore only load level are important in them not not stresses you just select them on the based on the supplies allowed load and then they will be replaced by connectors and third o procedure is among the remaining components assume a solid mesh for all them all of them and then study each component one by one and check whether surface representation b truthful to the geometry not in case of bulky parts that is very important if you see why do we do carrier meshing as we have seen little this is what a little uh, brief we can say here here number of nodes infinite these are dots are points are infinite numbers and degree of freedoms of if you say six of each node and the number of equations is infinite here number of nodes are eight one two three four five six seven and this eight and the degree of freedom if you see uh, if you say that six for each node for each node there is degree of freedom is six and no number of equations are 48 six six eight is a 48 equations here the number of equations is infinite and here is number of equations 48 the basis of idea of FEA is to make calculations at only limited number of points and then interpolate the results for the entire domain that is surface or volume if you get if you have finite number of equations then only you can able to solve the equations if you have infinite number of you can't uh, solve equation even so any continuous object has infinite degree of freedom and it's just not possible to solve the problem in this format at all as I told and the finite element method reduces the degree of freedom from infinite to the finite with the help of discretization or meshing or that is meshing is nothing but nodes and elements joining that nodes that is what um, nodes and elements joining this nodes and elements we can say the meshing and if you see how to decide the element type this is element type selection that is geometric size and shape and the type of analysis and the time allotted for the project if you see in a geometric size and shape for an analysis the software needs all three dimensions defined right and it cannot be make calculations unless the geometry is defined completely or by meshing using nodes and elements and that these geometry can be categorized as 1d 2d or 3d based on the dominant dimensions and then the type of element is selected accordingly next if you see the 1d element here we can see 1d element used for geometrical having one of the dimensions that is very large in comparison to the other two if you see <coughs> x y z coordinates if you see this a 10 and this is y axis is 5 and z x axis is 10 here x is greater than y and z and z is of x is if you say x is thousand x is thousand y is five and ten is if z here z z and the x is greater than y and z the shape of 1d element is a line isn't it and when the element is created by connecting two nodes this and this the surface or sorry the software knows about only one out of the three dimensions the remaining two dimensions the area of the cross section must be defined by the user as additional input data and assigned to the respective element if you see practical example 
long shaft rod beam column spot welding bolted joints pin joint bearing modeling all are uh, comes under 1d elements that we have see and the practical applications that is long even practical examples and uh, even applications we can use here in this form if you go through 2d element used when two of the dimensions are very large in the compared to the third one if you see this is 500 and this is 300 and this is 10 or 2 sorry and if you say this is what 2d element and 2d meshing is carried out uh, on a mid surface of the part and 2d elements are planar just like paper by creating 2d elements the software knows two out of the th three required dimensions the third dimensions thickness has to provide by the user as an additional input data and why is 2d meshing carried out on uh, mid surfaces in mathematically the element thickness specified by the user is assigned half of the or half on the element right you can see here the top and half on the bottom side hence in order to represent the geometry appropriately it is necessary to extract the mid surface and then mesh on the mid surface in a practical example all sheet metal parts plastic components like instruments panels etc in general 2d meshing is used for parts having width and the thickness ratio of greater than 20 if you see a uh, limitations of a mid surface and the 2d meshing is 2d meshing would lead to a higher approximation if used for variable part thickness and surface are not planar and have different features on two sides if you see a third 3d element used when all three dimensions are comparable all three dimensions can be comparable and here we can say that examples or applications is here practical applications are the transmission casting uh, you can say clutch housing engine block or connecting rod a crankshaft or these are the examples and if you see a th uh, second is uh, based on the type of analysis the structural and uh, fatigue analysis is very important that is type of analysis that is called hexa elements are preferred over tries tetras and pentas crash and non-linear analysis the priority to mesh flow lines and brick elements over tetrahedron and the mold flow analysis triangular elements are preferred over quadra quadrilateral if you say a dynamic analysis when the geometry is a borderline uh, between the classification of 2d and 3d geometry 2d shell elements are preferred over 3d always and this is because a shell element being a less stiffer capture the mode shape accurately and with a fewer number of nodes and elements as compared to that 3d element and if you see third one is time allotted for project it's very important minimum time required to get a result isn't it so when time is not a constraint even the time is not constrained the appropriate section of element mesh flow line and the a good mesh quality is recommended and if sometimes due to very tight deadline the analyze analyst is forced to submit the report quickly for such situations automatically or batch meshing tools could be used to instead of limit 
consuming and but structural and good quality provide providing methods and for 3d meshing chatras and preferred over hexas hmm. and third is if the assembly of a uh, several components is involved then only the critical parts are meshed approx eh? appropriately are you getting this if the assembly of the several components is involved then only the critical parts are meshed appropriately the other parts are either coarse mesh meshed or represented approximately by 1d beam springs con uh, concentrated mass etc and this is what a brief introduction of brief uh, information of mesh in meshing in a fe so we'll see in the next class with the next topic thank you thank you one and all